Now the sixth mechanism is new soil mineral formation. So one thing that is beginning to become more and more um, recognized is the fact that mineral fertilizers when applied to the soil, although they do have many positive effects, they also have many negative effects. What happens is those mineral fertilizers convert into ammonium carbonates, ammonium hydroxides. These are highly alkaline materials and tend to dissolve soil organic matter. They then are converted through nitrification into ammonium and ammonia forms and eventually into nitrate forms. These, in the presence of water, are, are acidic and tend to dissolve soil minerals. So what you have is, with repeated mineral fertilization, a, a complete destruction of that soil. You destroy not only the soil organic matter, but you begin to dissolve the soil mineral matter. And so what you are left with, in many cases, is not a soil, it's more of a substrate. And so the, the question is, how do we rebuild and restore those higher level minerals? Well, liquid carbon acts as a almost like a seeding structure, a seeding matrix that allows those higher forms of minerals like montmorillonite, vermiculite, kaolinite to begin to form. Now, this process normally takes geological periods. We have seen that this can take place in seasonal periods. And so this is a, a very interesting and a very dynamic process. But we are able to see the rebuilding of these higher forms of minerals in that soil. These minerals are important in many ways, but, but one of them is in the, the loosening or the decompacting of that soil and the, a proper soil structure. The final, uh, so one thing I wanted to do here, so, so we talked about holding water and we talked about better drainage. And so how do, how do both of those things happen? Well, the hydrophobic and hydrophilic mechanisms, these help to hold moisture around each particle and they reduce evaporation. The particle aggregation, microbe gas pressure activity, new soil mineral formation, worm activity, these things help to decompact or loosen the soil and increase the soil porosity for better drainage. So these mechanisms are working together. They're not working just one at a time or singularly. They're working in synergy together. So the final mechanism that I wanted to discuss is unlocking bound phosphorus and other nutrients in the soil. So normally when one puts down, uh, for example, um, phosphorus into the soil, that tends to bind with the soil cations in the soil and they form insoluble phosphorus compounds. These phos insoluble phosphorus compounds are not usable by the plant. And so what you get is a very low percentage of that phosphorus gets used by the plant. Instead it gets bound up into that soil in insoluble form. However, when you place liquid carbon, it stimulates several different mechanisms. First mechanism, it stimulates the enzymes that are in that soil. The second mechanism, it begins to stimulate bacteria in that soil, which then release enzymes and other, other compounds. And it acts as a uh, a catalyst for chemical interactions to take place in that soil. And so these different uh, processes convert those insoluble phosphorus forms into uh, available and usable forms for the plant. They also help to form soil humus compounds. And these humus compounds are extremely important for proper soil structure. So what you get is more phosphorus availability for the plant, you unlock within the ground, and you begin to um, create a very important soil structure in these humus compounds. So in summary, on these mechanisms, 
Um, liquid and dry carbon help to hydrate soil particles. They help to aggregate small particles. They decompact the soil. They stimulate soil microbes, algae, and other life. And, and their biological processes then work within that soil to, to create beneficial outcomes. They increase soil organic matter. They help form new soil minerals. And they unlock available soil nutrients. Now it is important to note that these are not just um, unfounded claims. Every one of these particular soil parameters can be quantified through proven test methods. So for example, soil density and specific gravity reduction, the increased soil porosity, aeration, and gas exchange. These can be de detected through penetrometer readings, very simple uh, readings that farmers and, and, and the laymen can use. Increased number of tunnels, higher water permeability through the soil. These can be detected through water filtration through soil and visual signs of drainage. Increased organic matter content can be detected through organic carbon analysis. Increased soil microbial activity can be detected through standard microbe tests. Improved soil structure using soil fraction analysis. New, mineral, new soil mineral formation can be detected using soil clay mineral content analysis. Increased water holding capacity can be tested with standard soil moisture tests. And there are standard tests for CEC capacities within the soil. So these are all quantifiable. So one could start test using these methodologies, treat, and then over time begin to see these particular parameters to, uh, to be measurable. Now why, do, why are these humics, why are Monty's humics um, better, um, better than, than most on the market. Why do we have a competitive advantage? Well, if you look at humic acids and fulvic acids, these start with a raw uh, cold material for the most part. Depending upon where you select that material, you will get different types of humics and fulvics. And so not all humics and fulvics are created equal. It's it, it really begins with the right selection of the starting material. If I took organic matter in my yard in Louisville, Kentucky, and took soil organic matter from, or organic matter from one of you guys down in Australia, it's different. And so these deposits are also different because they are created from partially decomposed organic matter over millions of years. So the selection of the material is very important. The second thing is the processing technology. I mentioned earlier that our processing technology opens up the functional groups. It takes out the passivation components. And we select, design and select the proper ratio between fulvics and humics. And so that's, that's specific processing technology. So it's the combination of these things that enable us to um, develop highly active biologically, chemically, and geologically active materials. Now if you do a product comparison between, for example, Monty's dry carbon and most other dry materials, most of the others are extremely low active insoluble humic acids, as we talked about earlier. Dry carbon has highly active soluble humates. Most other dry humics have low active soluble fulvic acid. We have highly active soluble fulvates. Most others have inactive human. We have absorptive activated human. Most of them have no range of real organic carbon substances. What this is talking about is if you look at the different types of carbon materials in that dry 
dry composition, they're, unless they're processed properly, those are in a very um, scattered state. They're in a very disorganized state. When we process our dry carbon, we organize those structures so, so that they're more easily um, uh, found by microbes and other organisms that convert them into other compounds. So we have what we call optimal composition and range of orga organic carbon in the form of oxidized and reduced organic matter. So we're processing that organic, that range of organic carbon inside that brown coal. And then finally, most of the other dry humics, if you mix them with different types of nitrogen fertilizers, they end up turning into a gummy mess, gummy clumps of material, very difficult to spread. Our material is compatible with most mineral fertilizers, so we don't have that issue. So what you end up with with dry carbon is high efficiency, quick results, low application rates versus low efficiency, much slower results, and higher application rates. If you turn to Monty's liquid carbon, the liquid, what we have here is a real solution of humic acids. This is not a dispersion. You look at some humics and they're cloudy. There's particulates floating throughout. That's more of a dispersion, not a real solution. So this is a real solution that we have. They're highly purified. They're highly active biologically, geologically, and chemically. Biologically means that we're stimulating the biological uh, forms within the soil. Geologically means that we're spawning the, the formation of the, those, new, those new minerals that we talked about. Chemically says that we're acting as a catalyzing agent uh, in that soil. And then finally, we have the optimum fulvate humate ratio for, for a wide range of different soil types and benefits. So in summary, if you look at Monty's products, we have proprietary and patent pending technology. You have purity. You have optimum molecular weight distributions for specific applications. You have high activity, biologically, geologically, and chemically. And you have end up with much better results with these. And we're, we're seeing these results day in and day out. And I believe that's it. That's Humix 101.